Hello, and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel. I'm Joseph, and with me is Guy. Hello. And I'm Dan. All right, so we got our mo models prepped. We got our mo models clean. We got our models primed. What's the next step? So, there's two different, I guess there's not only two, but there's two main philosophies I think we have here. I do the battlefield ready painting. So, I have the Army Painter Speed Paints. I absolutely love them. If you don't like painting or you want to paint really quick or you're not a major hobby, it's like I prefer to play more than to paint. They work really well. They're super quick. Plug there, I guess. <laughs> and then from there, I mean, they just, they go on so nice. They are so easy to control. They look good from three feet away. That is the thing. Whenever I'm looking at my minis, I never. the only time I see them up close is when I'm painting. When I'm not painting them, they are on the board about three feet away from my eyeballs, and they look presentable right there. The only people that I really take my time on are the commanders. So my Edward Teach, again, check it out on the blog. You'll notice that I got his little ribbons in his beard. I braced my arm up and everything to make sure that I got that done because he's a centerpiece. But for standard guys or, you know, your models that aren't your favorite unit, I just go by super quick. I usually figure out my paint scheme. I paint one to figure out how I'm going to paint it. And then I go assembly line. I do all the greens and then I do everything that's going to be black and everything's going to be brown. I kind of assembly line it. And I think I painted Teach in like 10, 15 minutes of that. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks good. And if I'm if I want colors darker, I have washes to go on top of it. I will help mute the colors as needed. That's kind of my spiel. I go by really quick. I want to get them done and presentable. And then as soon as they are done, I hit them with a matte a matte sealer and I do double coat just to make sure you won't have to do this on plastic so much. But on metals, you want to like, hit it with something because if they're banging around or anything, they will chip and that really sucks to go back and do touch ups on. Yeah, depending on how much you like painting how many models you eventually want to have. Yeah, there's several la layers. How, how much time you really want to spend on each model. Uh, but these contrast to speed paints are a pretty valuable tool. I've been using them here and there as well. I want to have a force of every nation, so I'm painting a lot of models. And yeah, you can't spend, I can spend two or three hours on one miniature, and if you have a life, that's difficult to get 100 models of French, 100 models of Dutch. You don't really need that, but if you're a crazy person and you want that, if you're trying to do 12 of every model <laughs> yeah. line, and then if there's Soldatin and Infantry, uh, they need to be different, right, Just <laughs> That's right. you got to have 12 models of European soldiers for every single nation. So you got to have 72, and you multiply that by two hours each, and you're getting up into big time. So, yeah, I've been using the uh, speed paints, too. There's contrast paints which is the gw line there's speed paints which just came out fairly recently this year the army painter army painter is i think it's a superior product it's cheaper like half as much and it's a little easier to control it doesn't uh, mm -hmm. do streaking as much it does dry a little weird it will reactivate if you try to paint over it for longer although it does dry out pretty fast so you have to treat it a little bit different. But overall, I've been really happy with it. I got a set of like 20 colors for $70, $80. Oh, nice. Which is compared to the contrast, which is about 6 or $7 each. It's a good deal. And the dropper bottles rather than the GW pots. So, um, And you can use these in a varying uh, level too. You can mix and match. You can do a undercoat of like a tan and then put a brown over the top. It's kind of a instant shade and highlight or you can just use straight speed paints and just yeah 15 minutes you can get a miniature presentable pretty fast but you can also just spot use it you can do a you can do all your base coats and you can just put this over some parts of it that you don't really want to spend the time highlighting but you want to shade it uh there's a lot of different you can mix and match do a lot of different things with it but for quick work it's a good product for mix and match it's a good product but it is a bit of investment, especially if you already have a line of paints. Have I waffled enough on that? <laughs> no, well, I I think you've touched on a lot of really important things. In With Blood and Plunder models, there's a bunch of things that you're going to have to paint a lot of. The first thing that comes to mind is the wooden decking on all of the characters' feet. Uh, you're going to have to paint that, like, even if you have a small force of one starter box, you're painting that wood. 25 times mm -hmm. it's just straight straight up there's 25 bases so if you have a speed paint that you just want to just hit all of their bases in a series 
And I, what I do is I don't use any speed or contrast paints, but I do, I do batch painting, which I think you guys do too. I do small batches, four to six models if I'm going to do multiples, but I can't handle the 20 models at a time. Oh, I don't do 20 models. I've done, especially not, you don't want to do it with metal models because if you do find a good way to, to mount them, the metal is top heavy. So you're going to knock them over really easily if they were, pl- and, and when you knock them over, like half the time, something is going to bend, which is going to chip your, your base. That brings up a good thing. How do you guys mount models to paint them? How do you hold your models to paint them? I have one of the little Citadel little grippers. And because it's made for Citadel models and not Blood and Plunder, I actually have a base that's on there. And then I have sticky tack that I stick the model onto. <laughs> just because it gives me something to grip because I can't. I can't hold things for very long. I actually do have a bit of an anxiety issue. So sometimes if I'm sitting there, my hand will start shaking. I really need something to brace against, specifically my left hand. And it's terrible. I hate it. Yeah. So I need something to like grasp onto. I really don't. I recommend nobody hold the model itself while painting. That's a great way to like almost ruin your work as you paint rubs off mm-hmm. from where you're holding. Yeah, you'll rub paint off and put fingerprints into yep. paint and you'll yeah. get really annoyed at yourself. So don't hold the model. I mount mine on spray bottle or that's, rattle yeah, can that's really top. Smart, yeah. <laughs> All those testers, dull coat yeah. <laughs> cans that I've mm-hmm. gone through. It works great. Um, just poster yep. putty on top. I use I use poster putty too, but I use I use uh, pill bottles because I have uh, loved ones that are on daily medication. So I got a lot of pill bottles. So it's easy to recycle those as little paint stands. And I also use poster putty. I'll do four to six models in a batch, depending on on how many models I bought. <laughs> and usually with <laughs> I'll do it kind of differently with uh, if I buy, I'll try buying like um, 16 models of one type at a time. And I'll paint all four guys that are in the same pose to specifically make it so they look different. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes I've done a set of four, a set of four, a set of four. And I realize I painted the same guy the same yeah, way. Yeah, you day. gave him the same color bandana. <laughs> I do that. I do that anyway. <laughs> it helps me. I have a lot of minis. I'm sure that you have more, Joseph. But I have a case full of them because, you know, I play a game basically weekly. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be playing with my minis or if I need to loan my minis out. So I keep them all looking the same specifically so I can identify units. Yeah. So all my Zelaiden look the same. All my Interplogue look the same. All my Sailors look the same. All my generic ones. I have it so I can identify. Go, okay, here's what that is. Here's what that is. Here's what that is. (laughs) I have played with people, too, who do the same thing, but they paint it based on the, the book. So they'll paint all of their models the same way that they look in the book. So every free that's easy to match it with your card or it's easy to match it with the image in the book. That's yeah, easy to match it helps. like across the table. You're like, that's that's a freebooter because he looks like this mm-hmm. freebooter, you know? Yeah, I do no more than eight. When I batch paint, eight is my limit. And that is if I feel like, you know, I'm doing good, I'll start at four. Then if I'm feeling good, I'll do four more. But if I get home and I'm just like, you know, I got to I'm ready to paint. I'm in a paint mood. I'll do eight at a time and I'll do that same thing where same pose. Yeah. I'll start at the same pose and I go and do all the everything that's going to be blue and then everything that's going to be red and i just go down the line and then the base is last i still have my i think it's wild wildwood contrast because that's what i've been using on my bases since the game started and i refuse to change it because it'll it'll throw my brain off <laughs> <laughs> yep bases yes, they all have to be the same another kind of battlefield ready way to paint is with the <laughs> old army paint or dip that's kind of a disgusting product but you can just do regular paint base coat and then brush on don't really dip it brush on this basic varnish shade all in one product it takes forever to dry and it's not the best but it varnishes it really tough it will never chip and it gives a basic shade to the whole miniature it's a quick way to paint just put your base coats on if you have either vallejo or whatever miniature paint or even craft paint you use or and army painter using the army painter dip. Yeah, <laughs> that'd probably be smart, wouldn't it? Um, that's another, I think, equivalent. I think it's actually an inferior option at this point compared to the speed and contrast paints, but it's a little cheaper. It gets derided by a lot of people. A lot of my early models, I did something really similar because uh, you can do base coats and then a layer of Games Workshop wash over the whole model. Like a lot of mine, I just did a layer of the 
Agrax or Shade over the whole model, including the base and and like you like in the first ones, even the scan needs everybody turned out really tan. And and that's a way then you, you still have to unlike the dip, you still have to add a sealer at the end. But it, it does about the same thing and it looks about the same. I have some of the Army Painter dip right. but in a little dropper bottle because it came with uh my my paint set it's not that bad is that the dip or just the shade because the dip is super globby and slow moving and it wouldn't really work out of a dropper bottle the the product that i have uh said that the the stuff in the bottle is the same stuff as the dip i have not I have not bought in dip, but it came with a little booklet. I was like, oh, this is fun. It's a booklet on painting. And then it's like, it was basically just hyping the dip. It was kind of funny. Oh, well, it's like, this isn't right. helping me paint at all. It's just saying, <laughs> saying, use our, di- use our product, please. Great. <laughs> but I have some, and it, it does have that varnish, like what you're talking. So areas will be sh- kind of shiny. You need to, you need to yeah. be aware of that because a lot of the time with blend and blender models, you don't want them to be shiny. Because yeah, you got to put a flat coat on it several yeah. times to tone it back down. Otherwise, they look like they're standing out in the rain, light rain or heavy rain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're moving on to advanced painting now. Tell us about your advanced painting. So that means I'm going to bow out. <laughs> <laughs> I use what I learned and used to call the Games Workshop painting method, which was when I first started, which is the base coat wash highlight. On all the models, just a base coat of everything. Then you do specific washes for specific areas. So like a flesh wash on flesh tones. If they have a a white coat, then you'll do like a darker, um, like a black or like a, a dark brown. And then that's that's my method for painting most models still. The GW line is really good for this method because they have their kind of sets of paint you have. This blue, and then you have, if you want to highlight it, you have this blue, and this blue, and this blue that yep. all are supposed to go on top. So it's kind of a easy pull it out of the box and use it method. And they're even labeled where if it says that with the Citadel paints, if it's a thicker paint, it will say but it will say base, mm-hmm. and then other ones will say what wash or layer. Layer, yeah, that's that's what they call it. Layer is a highlight paint. Or you, or you do glazing on it. Yeah, so I appreciate that. I think that's a really good way to get started. But I've the GW line of paints. I some of them are really bad, honestly. Like the metallics, I do not like. The blues, I do not like. The greens are all kind of a fantasy color. The browns are quite good. I like them and the grays, and the reds are so so. Um, but I keep buying new paints because I'm stupid. The Vallejos are really nice. Um, there's some other AH series. The Vallejo metal color is the best paint you can ever buy for your metallic silvers, especially. Army Painter is so so. Um, yeah, you can. I don't like Army Painter's metallics. I don't like Game oh, Workshop yeah, no, no. metallics either. They're the worst. And the stupid Games Workshop pots end up drying out after a year and you waste yeah, so much money. That's why I, I've sworn those off except for. Except for like they have, they make really good flesh tones. Like, yep, I still use their flesh tones. <laughs> Set like f- yellow. I don't know. Thanks. I know. I know. Well, I, I like. The, I, I'm saying GW ones. Is that what you're saying? They're yeah, Games use- Workshop. They it's it's called Citadel Paint because yeah. they call everything different. I think I I'm gonna get a lot of flack from the community. Uh, I use Craft Store Paint for a lot of my basic colors. I have a lot of paints that are hobby paints for. Uh, I, I bought an army painter set of paints that came with 70 something paints. And I, 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 that's, I, after I did that, I'm like, well, you know, these paints are not bad. Uh, army painter. The thing with them is a lot of them are thinner than usual, especially thinner than most games workshop ones. So if you have a color that you want, you have to either add a thickening agent to it, or you need to, to put a couple layers on to get the same color but yeah i appreciate the vallejo because it's really opaque you put one color oh at least there's vallejo has a couple different lines the game color stuff i really hate but their mm-hmm. other lines are, seem quite good i want to put a be able to put a layer on and not have to go back and put another and another, another layer on that's just yeah more times that's what they'd rather pay for paint that works <laughs> you know what is i do want to mention is that uh, vallejo washes are 
my favorite type of wash. They're they're so much the the you have to know what color you're getting when you get one, but their washes dry faster than other washes. They're more consistent, and you get more in a in a tube. I've just had a lot of success with their washes. Yeah, they don't cost as much, and they don't spill. The GW ones, the Citadel washes, they're in that tall tube uh, pot, and they. How many have you? I've spilled way too many. Yeah, of those. and and the other thing is with Games Workshop, the black wash non oil actually has a lot of brown in it, whereas the I love that actually. I like oh, the oil. you oil do oil and the Agrax or I'll I'll use those for. I, I've I've bought in more than twenty pots of Agrax or shade in my life. Oh my goodness, I've done three. <laughs> <laughs> I've done so. I've done a lot. Well, the you know we're talking about advanced painting techniques. That poster tack that you have out there if you're gonna use citadel paints the if you're already using the poster tack to put your miniatures on stuff every time you're gonna open up a bottle of wash or a paint pot put a little thing of poster tack on your painting table and put the paint pot on it and you will save yourself so much paint have you ever knocked over a a wash bottle joseph Oh, yeah. Probably <laughs> have, five of them. <laughs> have you, Dan? No, but I also have my desk set up to where I only bring one paint down at a time while I'm using it. Oh, my. And when I'm done with it, I put it back up, and then I put it back up. I have a whole little oh. MDF laser cut rack that I have. So, oh, nice. Yeah. And again, all my stuff is a dropper bottle Oh yeah, for the okay. most part. So that's, that's nice. I'm looking at my desk now, and I think I have 100 paints on my <laughs> desk. Out of my MDF control. Yeah, and even then, even before I got my current setup, I usually have one pot of paint out specifically to prevent that because paint's expensive. And there is a time where if I knocked over paint and lost it all, I don't know when I'd be able to replace it. Yeah. So I just one pot, pull it out, paint everything. I'm done. Close it, move it back, pull something else. I'm very particular with my process to prevent anything like that. Yeah, that is smart. smart. <laughs> Dropper bottles helps with that a lot too. It's all of the Citadel paints come in these these open top things that I think you're you're meant to, and I do paint directly from the top of. And it's just in especially with the washes, I've I've like five of the Agrax or Shade bottles I lost were because the whole thing spilled out. And then like I bought droppers, like at like eye droppers, just to recover the wash and other reasons. They're they're useful for other stuff, but I use them the most to recover washes that I spilled to squirt it back in the pot. So back to basic or to our advanced, what we're calling advanced techniques. I mean, there's so many layers of painting. Advanced yeah. can go sky's the limit. You can see stuff on Instagram is just insane. But for the our purposes, advanced, if we do a wash and then a kind of a several layers of highlight with increasingly bright colors, you can really give a model more of a lifelike and or a three-dimensional appearance. Um, the other thing is I would consider advanced or un- maybe we should call it unnecessary rather than advanced <laughs> techniques are adding uh, eyes. Oh, yeah. People hate doing eyes. Everybody hates Ugh. doing eyes, but just a little sliver of white and a dot of black, if you can control your brush, um, can really bring a miniature to life, but it can also make them look like a googly If you do them monster, too big, so. yeah. The, um, with the model, and there's, there's two schools of thought on it. Yeah, one is that... If you look at if you look at a person from slightly above, like go to go to in go into like a, a three story building and look out at people like a hundred yards away, you can't see their eyes. So and that's the distance if you think about it when you're gaming and you're looking at the tabletop, you can't see the you can't see their eyes. You shouldn't be able to from like a hundred yards away and slightly over everybody. Isn't that when you shoot though? Yeah. You the well, if you're doing if you're doing low, but yeah, with with you photographing so much and and me photographing occasionally and just having the model like I'm spending the time anyways. I want to add eyes to it. Talking about eyes brings up the topic of brushes. Yeah. What do you guys use for brushes? Because you have to have a good brush to do an eyeball. You well, you have to have a a precise brush. I don't think good is about as much, but you can't have you can't have a brush that is uh, squirrely in the tip. It has to be a very narrow tip. And if you're not using good brushes, if you're not using good brushes, that means that you bought a the the brush is mostly new 
because if you're if you're I use cheap brushes and they're good for that purpose of doing like line work for for a little bit and then eventually they're going to go squirrely and then you throw them away but at the price i pay for them i don't mind throwing them away when they get that point because they usually graduate to being a dry brush and then once they get a two squirrely after being a dry brush for a while then they become i i just break them in half so i stop using them yeah i have used a nice brush for a while and then when it gets kind of nasty i use it for a basing brush and then after that i use it for a i can use it for a dry brush or i can use it for just a transfer brush another thing i do that we haven't talked about is use a wet palette occasionally i uh, I exclusively use a white palette yeah so i have to take paint from the pot onto the wet palette and you really don't want to use if you're using a gw pot you have to use something to transfer that so i'll use a nap and you don't want to do that with your nice brush because it'll get paint all the way up into the guts of the brush and splay it out and that's how it runs yeah yeah but i use nice brushes i use the windsor and newton brushes that are good 18 bucks a pot but if you're careful with it it'll last you a long time and i figure if i'm gonna spend my time painting i can get more done with a nice brush and i can have less frustrations with it i figure my time is worth a lot more than 18 bucks if i'm gonna paint for 20 hours with it so i just yeah i justify at least make myself not feel too bad by spending the money no 18 actually isn't a lot for a brush i thought i thought the brushes you were buying were like uh 80 to 150 no no way <laughs> i use a size zero one and zero zero yeah they're less than 20 dollars each that's not bad yeah yeah i would i've tried every other line i've tried the army painter i've tried the gw ones I've tried stuff, craft stores, and yeah, they can last me one session, and then they're just infinite frustration. The curl tips curl, or they splay out, they get loose mm-hmm. hairs, and then I just hate them. So why spend three dollars on a brush you can use for twenty minutes? I don't. I won't do it. <laughs> I I do think that if you're going to start painting, which c- congratulations on getting this far into the video, if you've <laughs> just started painting and this is the first painting thing you've heard, I suggest going cheap when you just first start painting, because there's going to be a lot of bad things you do to brushes and it's hard to ruin an $18 brush. Some things that you can do that that I did when I first started painting, uh, using the brush to stir a pot of paint is bad. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's uh, getting brush the the paint too far up the brush tip, uh, like what you mentioned, is as soon as it passes that collar, that's when it's gonna start splaying out. So you need to keep the paint to the tip of the brush and not let it get past the metal collar. Yeah, just about three or four millimeters on the tip. Don't let it get all up to the metal. Yeah, you can get water in there. Water is fine. Yeah. Uh, replacing your paint water often so it doesn't get too too painty, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, you you Your paint water, if you've been using it consistently and you've been dipping your paintbrush in it a lot, uh, it's going to have, it's going to get become like soup-like. And you need to replace it often. I kind of do it every time I'm going to start painting. I give myself fresh water. And make sure if you're drinking something, it's not next to the paint water. <laughs> yeah. Everybody <laughs> does it at least once, I feel. I've done it, too, where I went to reach for my drink, and it was the paint water. Yeah, I, I've done it, too. Yeah. I've never drunk my paint water. I have dipped my brush in my drink. but uh, that's my Oh, favorite. yeah, I've done that, too. <laughs> uh, a couple other advanced techniques I might mention is uh, the eyeballs are one thing, but you got to be careful with that. But if you're going to do that, I like to do the base color and then the wash and then do my eyes and then do the highlightings because you can do the, use the highlight colors to neaten up your eyeballs if you got a little yeah. over enthusiastic. Yeah, that's what I do is because uh, no matter even no matter how careful you are, there will be adding a, like a little layer of your flesh highlight right below the eye it will actually help brighten the eye. Yep anyways that can help or if you got a little bit more white than you need you can put a little bit of wash around the edge and bring it down too Mm -hmm. other things that you can put change your texture after you seal if you do a flat coat over it but flat coat over metal looks kind of stupid it makes it kind of grainy so if you go back and just do a little highlight of your bright silver on your gun barrels or your gold on your buttons that can bring it back to life a little bit or if there's something like native skin if you do a flat coat on it, it makes it really fuzzy and really flat. That's not how bare skin looks. So if you do thin down a gloss coat and put it over, it looks like sweaty human skin. It can bring it to life. Uh, so 
some things shouldn't yeah. be flat, but having a variety of finishes on some of those models really makes them uh, more lifelike. Yeah, I think that's a great point to bring up about the ceiling. These uh, with blend and plunder models, all of them need to be sealed because they're metal. And even a metal model tipping from on the table and falling down, if it hits another metal thing and or something made not out of foam, it's gonna it it can chip. It might chip. So you have to seal all your models aggressively. And I found metal also chips like crazy. <laughs> it does. It does. I mean, all of our models are covered with like those. The older ones are covered with a lot of chips. From noobs that we demo, just grabbing big handfuls of them, it hurts. Myself. Oh, <laughs> it still hurts. <laughs> All those those uh, those South American uh, natives that I did, the Caribs, those were those were like three three hours per model. Wow! I, when I did them, and he, the <laughs> picking them up in handfuls. But I found with that, I did a with native skin i did a layer of i sealed the model but then i did a layer of varnish of uh like a satin varnish mm -hmm. over the skin to make it shiny exactly yeah it helps and also if you're going to be using any sort of after effects like a, a rust or blood like yep. there's there's blood paints add those after you seal too or you'll lose the because sheen. the paints yeah. yeah it loses the sheen and then it looks like pink dabs Ooh, i kind of hated it <laughs> yeah 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 if you anything extra like that do it after the varnish it'll help it does it does a lot i will say probably the most advanced thing that i do is even on the model it's for my brushes i actually spend money on good brush cleaners i use just brushes i get off of amazon but when i'm done like once a month i will go ahead and rinse them all under under hot water and then let them dry out and then i leave them and i soak them in this brush cleaner and i've maintained i've had the same brushes for about a year now and they still there's oh, nice. a couple of them where the they start to curl up and usually if i just stick them in some really really hot water and then let the brush solution work it's not even like a big name brand i think it's an off brand i just again i get it off amazon but i find that really helps preserve my brushes because even i i want to eventually get into all the army painter brushes i like it when all my hobby stuff matches but it's expensive for a brush and i can't justify that when my brushes are working just fine <laughs> But I also might not need good brushes because yeah. I'm not I'm not crazy like y'all with the highlighting and taking 15 hours to paint one pressed men. <laughs> <laughs> not 15 hours on one, maybe like I think it, I, the, my pressed men were because I got so tired of painting the same model. In the end, it was like 20 minutes per model yeah. just doing batch painting like all the all the shorts are the same color. All of their stockings are the same color. <laughs> I like painting one batch of or one type of miniature several times because some of the miniatures, especially the metal ones where it's or a miniature you're unfamiliar with, there's a lot of little bits and doohickeys on it. It takes a while to interpret that. What is this little thing? Especially like on the Dutch with their fluffy collars and shirts and little holes yeah. in their shirts. What gotta inter gotta figure out what all this is and what are you actually gonna do with it? So if you do the same set of models three times in a row, it can speed things up just because you know it's you kind of Remember, remember this is what this you know what yeah. you're painting yeah yeah you know the little the little bits you need to paint it also lets you keep track of if you're going to be doing the highlighting you need to make sure that you don't have you, if you have like let's say a you want to give them a red coat but then somebody has a bandana the bandana bandana can't be red or even it can't be even like orange like those colors will clash a little bit too much. So you need to make sure that it's a color that will stand out with the color that you're going to do for the coat and the color that you're going to be doing for the highlights or the shadows of the the coat. Yeah, I have this cool little color wheel that has like a... Yeah, me too. You can spin it and has triangles and tells you what's going to be... Yeah, not all colors look good together. And I mean, realistically, yeah. that's not always the way it looks. But if you want your colors, your miniatures to look pleasing, you can avoid certain combinations that look garish or obnoxious i use i use oranges and yellows as my highlights for red a lot of the time just because i think it i think it looks so good i don't know maybe i'm alone in that but like orange highlights on uh, for a red thing makes it just seem more red to me yeah you don't want to go to the pink crowd the last advanced painting technique i want to mention is commissioning it to someone else <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have the time, if you have the money, or not interested in painting, there are people who will paint them for, I think, very affordable rates and do a fine job. Um, you just have to take the time and get to know somebody and um, 
have less control over it, but that's a perfectly legitimate way to get your miniatures painted. I've seen prices between four and ten dollars a miniature, and I don't know how people do that. I would never. I would have to charge like eighty bucks a miniature to make it even remotely worthwhile for. It. But I'm thankful that that's out there, and that's a good option if you want to go that route. Uh, we got some painting articles on, uh, not a whole lot, but some of them on our blog. In addition to all the other articles we have about Blood and Plunger, go ahead and poke around on the blog for more Blood and Plunger topics. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel as well. We're recording this during Hobby Week, and we'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday from now on. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. And as always, keep your dice ready and the wind at your back. Yar har.